What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys another update on my dividend growth portfolio. And for those of you guys that don't know, I started this journey about June or July of 2020. And so it's been about a year and a half, almost two years where we started this dividend growth portfolio. We started off with $500 and to date we are at $8,670.88. It's been quite a journey. We've been through a lot of market ups. Right now we're going through some market downs. So it's definitely been quite a journey. Right now we are up almost 20% of weighted returns and that's a gain of $703.95 where we have earned almost $140 in dividends. Man, my goal is to get enough dividends to be able to retire and live off of these dividends so that I don't have to work a single day in my life after that. But we're really far away at this point, but it's all about the journey starting from $500 to where we are now. I couldn't be more happier. So with that being said, let's take a look at a lot more of my portfolio, how many dividends I'm getting per year now. And I'll also be showing you guys some of my updated holdings. So with that being said, you guys already know what comes next. Cue that intro. Before we get into the more fun stuff like how many dividends I'm getting per year, how many dividends I've gotten the past few months, or even how much I got in 2021, my holdings, what are doing good, what's doing bad, let's talk a little bit about how market conditions are affecting my portfolio. So of course we're right now we're going through a kind of, let's just call it conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So of course that's been affecting my portfolio to a certain extent. On top of that we are also in fears of hyperinflation and also the fed raising rates so of course that's been a little bit adding volatility to my portfolio and the s p 500 has been somewhat selling off over the past few months i mean let's just take a look if we go to the one year chart we all know in 2020 we had a miraculous year i mean we were up almost 30 percent the s p 500 i believe my portfolio even outperformed that going at almost 40 percent but in this past year or let's just hit the quarter man we're down five percent which in hindsight if you're a long-term investor this really doesn't mean anything at all and in fact it's actually good for you and i talk about this the psychology of a dividend growth investor in this video up here so i'll link that up there but anyways in my opinion it's awesome when the market tends to sell off you're getting more of a bang for your buck you're getting discounts on companies and you're also getting a better yield on cost which i won't go into too much detail in this video but essentially you're getting a bigger bang for your buck and that's what you love to see and you love to do while you're being a dividend growth investor but nonetheless we are down almost 500 dollars and we're down five percent so it's been a rough month i mean i've been consistently investing and that's just what i've been doing for pretty much since the inception of this portfolio we started off with about $50 per week, but now we're doing $150 per week. So as my income is starting to get a little bit higher in the professional world, I'm starting to invest more and more also as I'm getting more comfortable. But anyways, that's what's going on with my portfolio. Let's talk this back to the all chart and see how my specific sectors are doing. So I like to break it down in sectors just because I like this way of of making it an allocation it's just easier for me to figure out which companies i like and which companies i don't like in terms of dividend growth of course right now tech has a lot of growth but their dividend growth is huge so that's kind of the thing i'm looking at but at the same time their dividends aren't that good so as a long-term investor as somebody who wants these dividends in the future and i don't really want to pay taxes on them right now of course, that's why this sector is a lot larger than my utilities or my telecom, where they pay out higher dividends at a lower dividend growth rate. So again, that's my strategy going into this. Right now, we are off on every single sector except for the financial sector. And for my strategy for the financial sector, I'm a lot different. I switch it up compared to what I had in the earlier days. Right now, we have things or stocks such as T. Rowe Price, S&P, SPGI Global, Intuit, and ADP. I think Intuit and T. Rowe are the ones that are really killing me right now, although they are the ones that have the highest growth potential in terms of dividend growth rate and growth in general. So those are killing me right now as the S&P 500 and pretty much the general market is not doing too well. But I believe that I'm buying the dips and hopefully in, you know, maybe six months if we're lucky or even a year or two years, I'll be sitting in the green. So 
with that being said you guys can see i'm getting pretty hurt in the financial sector other places i'm doing quite well i mean we haven't really experienced too much volatility in sectors such as utility healthcare, and so on tech of course we faced a lot of volatility but i was just up so much in tech that it doesn't even matter i mean i've got strong companies like apple and microsoft so to me that doesn't really matter of course i've also got a couple off with a few companies that aren't doing too well i mean visa i'm surprised i'm down on visa i mean if we take a look at visa man you can kind of see that this is just me kind of falling off even though i'm investing into it every single week we're sitting at almost 213 dollars and the price is 200 dollars, which again to me i'm buying on discounts so to me it doesn't really matter but that's just my mindset as a dividend growth investor that's looking for the long term other than that, I mean, there's not really too much going on in my portfolio. I did end up selling out of a few stocks. Those stocks would be, or I think it was just one stock as of recent. I sold out of 3M or Triple M, whatever you want to call it. In my opinion, 3M has been growing their dividends for pretty much 60 years, and there's not too much dividend growth rate available to them. I believe they, this year they didn't even do 1% in dividend growth, and I was just, as a long-term investor, that's not what I'm looking for. So I decided to sell off and allocate it to some other companies that want to pay out higher dividends in the future or a higher dividend growth rate. So again, as a long-term investor, that's what I'm looking for. If you are in retirement, then that probably doesn't make any sense to you. But again, it really just goes to show the power of finding your time horizon. And that's something that I preach all the time. If you are a long-term investor, look for companies that have a higher dividend growth rate. If you are looking to use this money right now or get the money now, or if you are in retirement, look for the companies that pay a higher dividend. You don't have to really worry about that dividend growth rate. So that's just my opinion, and that's what's been going on in my portfolio. These are the overall gains and returns. We'll just toggle it to the one quarter just to kind of show you guys. Yeah, it's, it's been rough. It's been rough out here. I think the only reason I'm up in healthcare is because of AbbVie. So shout out AbbVie for that. But I mean, in the end, I, I would love to buy even more AbbVie, but that ain't going to happen in the, in the meantime, that is. So anyways, that's what's going on in my portfolio. And now let's talk about the cool things, like how many dividends I'm getting per year. This is one of my favorite spreadsheets because it allows me to track how much dividends I'm getting per month and then I can kind of compare it to previous months. So for example, if we look at July of 2020, this is the first month I ever received a dividend and this is when I started my portfolio. I was getting 11 cents. Compare that to 2021, I was getting $6.64 and then compare that to January of this year, I was getting $6.78. So I love to see that compound effect where I'm getting more and more dividends as I invest more and more and as I am reinvesting more and more dividends. I love it, man. And this is probably the one of the funnest things when it comes to dividend growth investing. It could be dry because you're not really buying and selling. You're just literally buying. And then for most people, you can just put on automate and they'll buy the dips in whatever sector or stock that's kind of lacking. But nonetheless, this is probably the most fun part. Just watching this exponential growth happen. I mean... Take a look at this. So in 2020, I got a total of $16.26 in dividends. And this year, it's only been two months. And I already exceeded that six-month total in just two months with $17.93. And I'm hoping to hopefully maybe even double what I got in 2021 of $90. And I mean, we might just be on track if we just keep adding more and more and reinvesting more and more. And here's just another cool little thing to look at. So the monthly average in dividends in 2020 for me was $2.71. Then in 2021 is $7.52. And then this year so far it is $8.97. So of course, I mean, we are definitely going through that exponential growth. And this is just another cool little cool chart to take a look at. But anyways, I mean, that growth is there. I love to see it. I mean, really nothing else much going on over here. Just, man, I just can't wait to see how it looks in five years, 10 years as I add more and more data. And again, guys, this is probably the most fun thing for me personally. But anyways, let's take a look at trackyourdividends.com. This is a website I did a video on, basically a free way to link your portfolio and kind of just look at a bunch of different statistics regarding your portfolio. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check out this platform for yourself. It's completely free. There are paid versions, but I don't get anything for it. I just figured I'd put that out there. So if you guys want to track your own dividends, it's here for you. I'll also leave a link to a video that I did breaking down every single one of the features over here if you guys want to check it out for yourself. 
But anyways, I love this platform because one thing that it really does for you is it basically projects your annual income in terms of dividends. So right now we are looking at $175 in annual income. So from one year from now, if I don't add a single dollar, if I don't reinvest anything, I'll be getting $175. But of course, we know that's not the case. I'm going to continue investing my weekly amount every single week. And on top of that, I'm going to be reinvesting my dividends. So hopefully, I mean, by the end of the year, I'll be able to get a lot more than $200. That's my goal for this year. I mean, we never really know. I mean, who knows if a company will start cutting dividends? We Who knows if we'll start going to recession? But that's why I picked a lot of these companies because I know they're recession proof. But it is what it is at the end of the day. But I just like to kind of look at, all right, my annual income is sitting at $175. My dividend yield is 2%. My yield on cost is 2.13%. But yeah, I mean, nothing else that I kind of want to go over in this, on this platform. I mean, we can kind of look at what stock is giving me the most income. Let's let's do that. So right now, Avi is giving me $12.15. Man, Avi has been a killer for me. I mean, I've been up a lot on it. I believe my average price, I don't know if it will tell me over here. Yeah, average cost is $104, and Abby is sitting $150. It's definitely been killing it. I'm up almost $100, which is a good amount of being up relative to my other stocks in this portfolio. And also, it pays me out the highest in dividends. So, love to see it. Love Abby for that. at and is another one. I've been actually down on this one. But on top of that, I believe that they're going to cut their dividends soon because of the merger. So, that's going to hurt. Pepsi is another. T-Row over here, which is actually quite down so as i buy more and more on this dip i'm gonna love it because in the future when it does go up i'm getting a huge bang for my buck that yield on cost is going to be a lot bigger but anyways let's take a look at the stocks that actually don't pay me out as much as some of the other ones into it man into it's one of those ones that have a high growth potential and not only the stock but it's dividend growth rate too i've been kind of i've been kind of getting killed on it i mean my average cost is 538 and the price is 464 so i've been trying to buy the dip a lot heavily on this one because i really like the products and services that it offers mint mobile is great I, they just partnered up with mailchimp and they have a lot more other services like quickbook out there so hopefully in the future this will be great as people become more and more into personal finance and as businesses start to look at quickbooks for example but at the end of the day it's kind of hurting me right now and i'm not really getting too much out of it but again i'm not looking for dividends right now i'm looking for it in the future so that's pretty much it for this video let me know what you guys thought let me know how much dividends you guys are getting let me know if you guys are liking this progress and guys remember this is a journey so if you guys want to see more of this journey definitely hit the subscribe button it means a lot to me hit the like button so i can keep going let me know if this content is good but anyways that's pretty much it for this video guys and remember guys everybody eats